In this video, we're gonna be discussing the conditional equations and identity equations. And later, pag-uusapan din natin ang proving of trigonometric identities. So let's start with this table. So we have group A and group B na mga equations. So under group A, there are some values of the variables that do not satisfy the equation. And there are some values that make the equation true or valid. Let's say, for example, our first equation. If x is 1, so we're going to substitute that value to our x. So we have 1 minus 1, that is 0. So 0 is equal to 0. And one value satisfies our equation. What if another value, let's say 0. If x is 0, we have 0 minus 1, that is negative 1. And negative 1 is not equal to 0. So meaning to say that negative 1 does not satisfy our equation. So these equations are called to be conditional equations. So again, hindi lahat ng values ng x will satisfy our equations. And our group B equations, every element or value of the variables satisfies the equations. So let's focus on the first example or the first equation. Let's have the same values that we substituted here. So if x is 1, so we have 1 minus 1, that is 0. Then here, 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 minus 1 is 0. So 0 times 2 is 0 also. So 0 sa left and 0 sa right side. What if x is equal to 0? So kanina, dito hindi nagsatisfy ang 0 natin. So tingnan natin kung magsasatisfy na yung 0 kasi sabi every element of or value of the variable satisfies the equation. So if x is 0, so 0 minus 1, that is negative 1. 0 plus 1, that is 1. 0 minus 1, that is negative 1. And negative 1 times positive 1, that is also negative 1. So here, ang tawag sa mga equations under the group B, they are the identity equations. Now let's have this table. We have three columns. The first column is the equations. The second column, we need to identify each equation if it is a conditional or identity. Then the third column, we need to state our proof. Let's have this equation. So we have x squared minus 1 equals the quantity x minus 1 times the quantity x squared plus x plus 1. This is an example of identity equation. Because this is just the factor of this equation. So every value that we're going to substitute sa left, makakakuha tayo ng same value kapag sinubstitute din natin sa right side ng equation. The next equation, sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta plus 1. This is an example of a conditional function. If theta is 0, the left side equation is equal to 0 because sine squared 0 is equal to 0. Well, the right side is equal to 2 because cosine squared 0 is equal to 1. So 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. In the third equation, we have sine theta is equal to 1 over cosecant theta. This is an identity equation because every element in the domain satisfies the equation. And lastly, we have this equation. 1 minus the square root of x all over 1 plus the square root of x is equal to 1 minus 2 square root of x plus x all over 1 minus x. This is an example of identity equation. Why? Because this is just by rationalizing of the denominator. So to rationalize, we need to multiply this part to 1 minus square root of x. So, both numerator and denominator, multiply natin doon. Kaya siya nag-arrive dito sa part nito. So, again, identity siya because in every value of x, kung ano yung makuha natin sa left side, yun din na makukuha natin value sa right side. Let's have this. So, before we proceed to proving of trigonometric identities, so, we need to be familiarized with these identities. We have the tangent, cotangent identities, Pythagorean identities, reciprocal identities, spread up to some formulas, some and different difference formulas, add even formulas, double angle formulas, at marami pang trigonometric identities. And here, hindi na natin sila kailangang sauluhin. 
because we have the super hexagon that we will tell us every identity that we need or yung mga basic identities na kailangan natin improving trigonometric identities. So if you want an in-depth discussion regarding this super hexagon, I have a separate video regarding this. I will be putting the link down in the description box. Let's have our first problem. So we need to prove that 1 plus sine theta cotangent theta is equivalent to 1 plus cosine theta. You can work either the left hand or the right hand of the equation. You just need to do is to determine which part of the equation is complicated to you and start working on that. So you don't need to change all the parts of our equation. So to start with, we can manipulate or we can work on the left hand by remembering that cotangent theta is equivalent to cosine theta over sine theta. So by substituting, we have 1. So 1 is still 1 plus sine is still sine. Now cotangent is equivalent to cosine over sine. And because we are working on the left hand, so the right hand remains. So here we can cancel sign sa taas and sign sa baba. And matitira dito sa part na ito ay yung cosine. So we have 1 plus cosine equals 1 plus cosine theta. Let's have another problem to prove. Cosecant theta tangent theta is equal to secant theta. So again, let's work on the left hand. Remember that cosecant theta is equal to 1 over sine. And tangent theta is equal to sine over cosine. So just substitute the value. So this part is the reciprocal identity and this part is a quotient identity. So cosecant theta is equal to 1 over sine. Tangent is equal to sine over cosine. And here we can cancel sine. So we have 1 over cosine equals secant theta. And we all know that using the reciprocal identity, 1 over cosine is equivalent to secant. Now, secant theta is equal to secant theta. Let's have our third example. Sine theta, tangent theta, plus cosine theta is equivalent to secant theta. So, let's work on the left in this example. So, the first thing that we need to do is to apply the quotient identity on tangent theta. So, in doing so, we're going to have sine theta multiplied by sine theta over cosine theta. This is the value of our tangent. Plus cosine theta equals secant theta. Then we need to multiply. So we're going to have sine squared theta because sine times sine is sine squared over cosine plus cosine theta is equal to secant theta. Then we need to simplify. So by simplifying, just like adding fractions, we need to have um, common denominators. So we have cosine Yung denominator natin and our numerator is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Because cosine divided by cosine is 1 multiplied by sine squared, we have sine squared. Then cosine divided by the denominator of our cosine, which is 1, still cosine. Multiplied by cosine, we have cosine squared. Then here we can apply the Pythagorean identity. So in which part? We have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. And that is equivalent to 1. So this is 1 na and we have cosine. And 1 over cosine is equivalent to secant. So secant theta is equivalent to secant theta. Our fourth example. Cosecant theta minus cotangent theta equals sine theta over 1 plus cosine theta. So we need to work on left. Here we can apply some reciprocal and quotient identities if we're going to work on left. Reciprocal identity in our cosecant theta and quotient identity in our cotangent theta. Cosecant theta is also equivalent to 1 over sine. Minus our cotangent theta is also equivalent to cosine over sine. Then we need to simplify. Since we have same denominators, we can just copy the denominator and 1 minus cosine in our numerator. So in this part, we need to multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 plus 
cousin tita. Why are we doing this? Because we're going to have another form of our expression having the same identity. At yung kalalabasan nun may lead us to our answer. Now, let's multiply. 1 minus cosine theta or the quantity 1 minus cosine theta multiplied by the quantity 1 plus cosine theta, that is 1 minus cosine squared theta. Then in our denominator, just copy the sign and our 1 plus cosine theta here. Then we can apply the Pythagorean identity. So 1 minus cosine squared theta is also equivalent to sine squared theta. Then cancel sign in the numerator in the denominator. So we have one remaining sign in our numerator. So our answer is sine over 1 plus cosine theta. So this is also equivalent to this part. So dun sa kanan ng ating given. Now let's have our fifth example. Prove that secant theta plus tangent theta is equivalent to 1 all over secant theta minus tangent theta. Then we're going to work on the right. So the first thing that we need to do is to apply some reciprocal and quotient identity. Reciprocal identity in our secant theta and quotient identity in our tangent theta. So we have 1 as our numerator. Then secant theta is equivalent to 1 over cosine theta. And tangent theta is equivalent to sine over cosine. Next is to simplify. So we're going to simplify the denominator. So we have the same denominator of cosine, then 1 minus sine. Then next is we need to get the reciprocal of our denominator and multiply it to our numerator. So we have cosine all over 1 minus sine theta. And the same thing that we did in our previous example, we need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 1 plus sine theta. So again, the reason why we are doing this is because to have another form of our expression having the same identity. So the new form of our expression will lead us to our answer. Then we're going to multiply. So cosine times the quantity 1 plus sine. Then 1 or quantity 1 minus sine theta times quantity 1 plus sine theta. That is equivalent to 1 minus sine squared theta. Then by applying the Pythagorean identity, 1 minus sine squared theta is equivalent to cosine squared theta. Then we can cancel cosine. So we have one remaining cosine in the denominator. So 1 plus sine theta all over cosine theta. And here we can separate. So we have 1 over cosine plus sine over cosine. Because if we're going to simplify this, we will go back to this form. So 1 over cosine is secant. And sine over cosine is tangent. So secant theta plus tangent theta. And this is what we can see on the left side of our problem. And this ends our video. And if you find this video informative, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. God bless us all.